All right, today we've got a two-for-one project. This is my Janus Halcyon 250. In order to get a little bit better top speed, I want to change this rear sprocket back here. You can see, but you also might notice that I've got a flat tire, so might as well take care of both at the same time while I've got this rear wheel off. First order of business is going to be getting the rear wheel up off the ground so we can do some work. Now, the saddlebags are in the way, so we'll have to remove them. It's not real obvious, but there's a little hook underneath here that's spring-loaded, right here. If I pull it down, then it can swing out. And then we've got some buckles under here, so we'll remove both of those. At this point, really the only thing holding this on is our axle shaft, which is right here, held on by this nut. You can see on the other side, it's just a round head with a hole through it. We can push an awl or something through there, a small screwdriver to keep it from turning. Our brake caliper, which is mounted by this and this bolt here, so we'll remove both of those and we can swing that out of the way. And then, obviously, the chain back here on the other side. We'll remove it as well. This axle nut is a 22 millimeter, and I'm just going to use a screwdriver for the back side. Over the couple of days I was making this video, I kept running into some technical problems where my phone had just quit recording. It could be because of the heat, could be just user error, but at any rate, I've got some places where we're missing video. At this point, I simply took out the two bolts that hold the caliper in and then lifted the caliper up to be tied out of the way. I like to just use a wire tie or something simple. Tie this guy up out of the way so it doesn't fall back down on me. Now just use a soft blow hammer or a simple rubber mallet to take that axle shaft up. You're going to have two axle adjusters that come off, one from each side. They are the same part, so you don't need to keep them separated. At this point, the only thing really holding this axle in are these spacers. There's one right down here, and another one right here on the other side. I'm just going to put the screwdriver here inside this one, and wiggle it around. You can see it's already fallen down and now the tire sitting on the ground now we grab onto the tire and roll it forward a bit what that's going to do is that's going to slack this chain for us we can reach in from behind and remove it from the sprocket. Now we have to lift it up high enough to get that tire out from underneath the back. You'll notice that it's changed a little bit. I put a wheel chock under the front to keep that front tire from turning and having the bike turn and lay on its side since I don't have any helping hands here. But now we'll lift it up. Notice, these are those spacers. This one, the long one, goes on the left-hand side. 
These two go on the right-hand side. This one goes on the left-hand side, just like this. To help me remember which way they go, I just put them on the existing axle shaft, just like this. All right, so here's the stock factory 47 tooth sprocket. See, it's got a 47 stamped right on it. Here's the replacement that I'm going to use. It's a 43 tooth. First thing you do, make sure you've got the right one before you start taking things apart. Line up the mounting holes. And I'm good to go. Okay, now removing these, you're going to need a 10 millimeter Allen wrench for the front, but on the back side of each one of these, there's a, a nut that you're going to need a 12 millimeter wrench for. Notice the pink on there? That's a Loctite red thread locker. You're going to want to use Loctite to put them back together to prevent them from coming apart. Even though they used a nylock nut here, just for safety, thread lock it. Check fitment, doesn't move around, we're good. Now we'll clean up these socket screws on the wire wheel. Here again we lost video, but at this point you would want to put thread locker onto the threads of all these bolts and run them into the nut by hand. There we go, sprocket installed. Because we've changed the size of that back sprocket significantly, made it a lot smaller, I'm almost positive this chain, as we took it off, is going to be too long. So we're probably going to have to remove a link from the chain. In preparation for that, we're just going to get to the front sprocket by taking off this front sprocket cover here so that we can get to the sprocket, so we can take the chain off, put it back on. Removing this front chain cover is going to require an 8 millimeter socket. One question I had early on was instead of changing the rear sprocket to a smaller, we could have uh, gotten a similar thing by changing the front sprocket to larger. You can see there is very, very little space in here. I don't think we could get any larger of a sprocket on the front here. So I think the only option is to make the rear smaller without getting in there with a the grinder. Even then, there is not much space. All right, if you're going to lengthen or shorten a chain or really do much uh, with it, you've got to find what's called a master link. So you can see all of these standard links here. These are holding it together. There's a master link that allows you to take it apart easily. So if we just rotate it around, I've got it in neutral so I can turn it here. And we can see right there is the master link. You can see it's got kind of a, a C-shaped clip here. I can push it off. Then the front plate's going to come off of it and the chain is going to push out to the back. And now we will remove the front sprocket. You rotate it so that it matches the splines of the shaft and it'll come right off. And then that front sprocket comes right off. 
All right, now we're going to lift it up and slide this wheel back under there and get the axle shaft in. the master link. Just going to take this little piece here and take that off. Front plate comes off. And then master link just comes apart. At this point, I messed up most of the video and don't have a good one of ch breaking this chain. I'm going to create a second video on specifically how to use a chain breaker. If you don't know how to use a chain breaker, go take a look at that video. For the Janus, I took out a single link pair, and here's the picture of that. Okay, now just like before, Feed that through. I can feed it to right about there. And then put it in gear to keep it from turning. Put it in gear to keep it from turning. Feed the bottom one, and they come together pretty well. We want to feed the master link in from the back side, so if we have to take it apart again, we don't want to have to take that clip off from the rear. Put that half on there. Bring this up. Put that put that on. Put our front link plate on
Got it on the first pin. Swing it up, put it on, put on this plate. Yes. And lock it on there. Okay. Before we put the axle shaft through, we want to take these adjusters and loosen them a lot. You want to, you can loosen them, you can take the nut all the way off if you feel like it, but you definitely want to get it way up near the end because we want to make sure there's enough. Now this threaded piece goes in toward the wheel. Don't put it on this way, you're going to be pulling it apart. Put it on this way. So then it'll go just like that going to have a mate just like it over on the other side. So again, I'm going to loosen that adjuster way out so I know that I've got enough room and put it in. tighten it over here. On the other side, I made sure that this was already, this pad is straddling the, the frame. Now you don't want to just crank this down tight because we have to turn them both at the same rate effectively to make sure that the tires, the wheels in there are straight and true. So I'm going to run this down until it, I see it start to tighten. It's not real floppy anymore. It's still a little floppy. There's a lot of looseness in that chain still. So. I can take a little bit more up. It's still pretty floppy, but I'm going to go around to the other side and tighten. Take a bunch up. Put her in neutral. At this point, I go ahead and put the front sprocket back on and tighten it back down. I just don't have any footage of it. All right. So now you want to keep an eye. We'll tire here, here, really back here, front and rear, because this tire is going to turn as we tighten these. It's really close. It's actually too far out on this side. So I'll tighten here. tighten up that nut which is going to squeeze this frame together which may adjust it a little bit. Make sure my tire is still centered. Make sure I like the chain play which I do. Tighten the axle down. We can cut this zip tie.
There's a threaded piece on the caliper itself. It goes between this mounting bracket and the brake rubber. Okay. Goes right there. And then our bolts go in. Now we'll put this front cover on again. And there we go. Reassembled. Now we'll set her back down. Thanks for watching.